Hello and welcome to Post to Post, the channel where we discuss all things hockey and all teams. It's time for another prediction video because we're going to talk about the conference finals. In the east we have Pittsburgh versus Ottawa and in the west we have Anaheim versus Nashville. Now, this is a, the video where we look like idiots because we, we put our, our predictions out there publicly and hope that we're right. So I just want to talk about the east first because you're a Penguins fan so let's just get into that uh, soon. Uh, Ottawa is the underdog the gritty team that's on a roll and has a lot of emotion. Pittsburgh's the team who is the defending Stanley Cup champions. They're experienced. Um, they're sound and solid. Who wins this series and uh, and how many games? And generally, what's your thought on this upcoming series? Pittsburgh in six. Pittsburgh in six. That is my prediction. Now, I'm going to kind of talk about why I'm saying Pittsburgh in six. First of all, Ottawa is a team with nothing to lose and no pressure at all because to me, majority of the people did not predict them to be in the situation that they're in. They're enjoying the moment. They're going in on a high. They're going to be flying because there's no pressure. Yeah. Pittsburgh has all the pressure now. They're the defending Stanley Cup champions. They look at this and say, well, you get the family, defending Stanley Cup champions, the deepest team in the NHL going up against the Ottawa Senators who cannot match them depth-wise. And to me... Well, I mean, if you look at the, the season series this year, the nod was actually to the Senators. They actually had one more win over Pittsburgh in the season series this year. So that's an interesting stat going into this matchup. But again, I think the experience and the depth of the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to you know, really solidify them in order to punch their ticket to the Stanley Cup final. I uh, completely agree. My prediction was Pittsburgh in six as well. Uh, I hate picking Pittsburgh. I don't like Pittsburgh, but I have to in this situation just because uh, I think the it's time for Ottawa's run to be over. Now, this is where I'm going to look like an idiot again because I picked Boston in the first round. Right. Ottawa won. I picked the Rangers in the second round. Ottawa won. Fool me once, fool me twice. No, no, well, wait a minute. In that case, I think you should pick Ottawa so this trend ends now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Pittsburgh wins. Maybe. Because apparently if you pick uh, Ottawa's opponent, you jinx them. Well, maybe I should do that then. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to yeah. stick, stick with Pittsburgh in six because I just don't think that Ottawa can can beat Pittsburgh. But, man, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, Ottawa's kind of on a Cinderella run in the East, really. They, they really are. And they've surprised me so much. And there's a lot of key guys that have surprised me. I said in the previous video about Dion Phaneuf. Guys look great, and I've really criticized him a lot over the last several years, even, well, more than the last several, because it really started when he made that shift to Toronto. I criticized that guy till I was blue in the face, but he has looked incredible in the playoffs this year for the Senators, in my opinion. And one storyline that, uh, just to talk about another Ottawa uh, defenseman, Mark Mathot, yeah. a storyline there is between him and Crosby, mm -hmm. because, you know, they, everyone knows what happened, that slash in the finger and that gruesome picture that everybody saw. Oh, the media is going to be playing that up like crazy. Oh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be annoying, yeah. actually. They're going to say Ottawa, Pittsburgh, Eastern Conference Final, and then they're going to show them a thought's finger. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to eat it up. Yeah, they're going to eat they're it right up. But yeah, that is a storyline going into it. Will anything carry over from that? Absolutely not. Uh, I don't think anything's going to carry over from that. Crosby apologized. But here's, yeah, he did. And here's my uh, advice to the Ottawa Senators. If they want to have success against Pittsburgh and up their chances to win, keep Chris Neal in the lineup. I think so. Yes, keep him in the lineup because he's going to be the exact type of poison that could hurt the Pittsburgh Penguins, a guy like that. You think Ottawa should play Pittsburgh physically? Definitely. Turn because Pittsburgh is going to beat them at the speed game. Yeah. Ottawa needs to try to slow them down. And to me, Ottawa is built more as a, as a more rugged style team compared to the Penguins. They need to be physical. They need to keep Chris Neal in the lineup. He's the type of guy that could really irritate some key guys in the Penguins lineup, maybe force them to take some retaliatory penalties, stupid penalties, that sort of thing. Chris Neal could be a big, big factor in this series if they keep him in the lineup. They got to keep him in. Yeah, if Pittsburgh, it's, if Pittsburgh can shut down Ottawa's breakout game in the neutral zone, Ottawa's not going to have any chance against Pittsburgh. Well, they, Pittsburgh is and they're really good at sound defensively. Yeah. If they want to be, they can have their defensive collapses in their own zone at times. They definitely can. But there's no team right now, in my opinion, that's going to sacrifice and block shots more than the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Ottawa has to be ready for that. They really do. And if you're the guy who has puck possession in that offensive zone, Staring flurry down. Be patient. Wait for the player to drop to block the shot. 
there. I'm giving advice on how to beat the Penguins. That's not cool. And that's another that's <laughs> a, that's another thing. We don't know what Flurry is going to show up because Flurry in game four and five, no five and six of last series, he didn't look good. And but the whole team didn't look good in game six. That's true. So if if Flurry from game seven shows up, uh, sorry Ottawa, you don't really have a chance. I, I don't want to say that, but I mean Flurry was absolutely amazing last night, and and no knock on Anderson. I think he's yeah, going to be no phenomenal knock. going so into too. this round. And who knows? At the end of it, we could be saying, well, it was battle of the goaltenders because I really think both of them are that good and playing that well right now that it could end up like that. Pittsburgh Anderson versus Flurry. Pittsburgh is so off offensively gifted. It's going to be Anderson's biggest challenge so far this this playoffs. Mm. It's it's night and day. I think between. Uh, the Rangers in Boston. Plus with Crosby being Canadian and playing in Ottawa, I think the reception for the Penguins team when it shifts to Ottawa for games three and four, I think it's going to be huge. And I think that arena is going to be really 50-50. Oh, you think it's going to be games really? Three and four. I really do. Because wherever Dang. Crosby goes, he, his uh, reaction that he gets from the Canadian markets is always positive. Because, I mean, come on, he scored the golden goal for Canada. He did. He's a Canadian icon. He really is. I wouldn't and, cheer for him. Oh, man. If he came to Montreal, I wouldn't cheer for him. What? You wouldn't no. cheer for him? Mm. Jeez. As a Montreal Canadiens fan, if I was in Vancouver watching a game and Crosby came to Vancouver, I wouldn't cheer for him. <laughs> he was on the last two Canadian gold medal winning teams. I know. Teams. He's just, he gets enough praise. I like the underdogs. The underdogs. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Ottawa's definitely the underdog there. in this series. That's the best word to describe them. But again... No pressure. No one expected them to get this far. So to me, they're going to be going all in on a high. And Pittsburgh better be ready and not underestimate this team whatsoever because they got nothing to lose. So you want you want Pittsburgh to win in four, and you think they're going to win in six. I assume you I assume you want Pittsburgh to win in four. Oh, of course. You'd always want yeah. your team to win in the least amount of games as possible because then you have time, you know, to heal any little nagging exactly. injuries. You can have a little bit of rest and relaxation, study your opposition, that sort of thing. But there's no way in hell Pittsburgh would wrap this up in four games. No way. I'm saying six. It could even go seven. I'm, I think Ottawa is going to take it to them. I think so too, a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, like I said, Pittsburgh in six, but I want Ottawa to win in four. Because damn, screw Pittsburgh. Jeez. Sick of watching Pittsburgh. What's with the Pittsburgh hate? I just uh, it's the Chicago, it's the Chicago effect. No knock on Chicago. No knock on Pittsburgh. I'm just so sick of watching them. I want to see new teams, new blood. All right, let's switch over to the West. I don't want to talk about Pittsburgh anymore. He's <laughs> getting riled up. I'm getting riled up. <laughs> All right, uh, Nashville and Anaheim. This is going to be a really interesting series. I think it's going to be a very low scoring series because we have two. Uh, very hot goalies right now, Gibson and, and Pecorene, and the defensive capabilities of Nashville in the past nine games or whatever they've played so far, or ten games, have been outstanding. Uh, they've really shut down um, the Chicago Blackhawks yep. and the St. Louis Blues. Man, that guy, I almost forgot who they, they were playing. Uh, so many teams, so much hockey. Yeah. Again, it's just my brain. Anyways, it's going to be an interesting series. It's, I think it's going to be a low-scoring series. So how, how do you th see this playing out, and who do you think wins, and in how many games? I think Anaheim is going to have their hands full. Nashville is something else right now. They really are. And the big story out of Nashville, to me, is their blue line. The offense that Nashville's getting from their blue line is unmatched in the playoffs this— well, all the playoffs this year. Their goal scoring, their— Ability to move the puck, the transition game. The Nashville Predators have the best blue line for that this year. Now, Anaheim's going to have to try to find ways in order to put an end to that. Yeah. Because if they don't, Nashville's beating Anaheim. They are. Because that blue line is just basically running wild right now and they're unchecked. So Anaheim's going to have to make some key adjustments to try to shut these guys down. Because their offense ability from the blue line, lethal, lethal, lethal. However... My prediction is Anaheim is going to go to another Game 7 in another this game series. Seven. And I'm going to say Anaheim's going to win in Game 7. I think there's... Experience an... factor is going to kick in again. Boom. Experience means so much in the playoffs. So, so much. I think there's no better team to shut down Nashville than Anaheim. They're just that in-your-face, gritty, annoying team. And uh, I, I honestly believe that Anaheim will win in six games. I don't think it's going to get to a seven, so I'll disagree with you there. Uh, I think Anaheim's going to do it in six, and 
that's again uh, one of these series where I'm conflicted because I want Nashville to win. Right. I really, really want I Nashville do too. to win. I want Nashville to win. But I think Anaheim's going to win, and I predicted Anaheim to go to the finals and actually win the cup. So I can't not go against Anaheim. Did, did I say Nashville? If I said Nashville, I meant to say Anaheim. I predicted Anaheim to go to the cup and win. So I have to stick with that. Right. That's my prediction. Wouldn't it be interesting though if Anaheim, uh, excuse me, if Nashville did advance to the Cup final and PK Subban was playing for the Stanley Cup after the Weber Subban deal? That would be amazing. Whew. I think Montreal fans would be very heated. I'd be happy over, over that. Well, I'd, a lot I'd of people would. You know, PK Subban is an interesting fellow. I won't say a whole. What did you think about Subban. his uh, embellishment fine he got? I loved it. You loved it? Yeah, because the guy embellishes all the oh, time. Oh, I thought you meant like you loved that he did that. And then... No, I loved that he got fined because the guy embellishes all the time. At times, I almost say he's kind of, what's a good word for Subban? Goofy. Yeah. I think goofy would be a really good word for Subban. He embellishes a lot. He turtles a lot. That's a great uh, term that we like to use in Canada for guys when challenged, they turtle. And Subban turtles a lot. He runs his mouth, and as soon as he's challenged, he turtles. Someone said, um, and I'm allowed to say this because I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan. So just, <laughs> That gives you a right. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm allowed, so just calm down. <laughs> Someone said that um, you know you can take P.K. Subban out of the Montreal Canadiens, but you can't take the Montreal Canadiens out of P.K. Subban. That holds very he, true. He dove. That's funny. That holds very true, I guess, in some regards. But he, yeah, he does have a lot of ties still with the city of Montreal and all that stuff. So, you know, class act in a lot of sense. Class for act, the fantastic stuff, guy. For the stuff that he's doing, you know, in, in that regard. Now, on to him as a player. This year in the playoffs, he's been phenomenal for Nashville. And I think he's really found a permanent home there with the Predators. Yeah. He's fitting in very well. And he's excelling. And he's looking amazing for the Predators. And if they want to have success against Anaheim, a lot of it's going to have to be on the shoulders of P.K. Subban on that blue line. A guy like Ellis as well. Uh, you know, These guys are going to have to keep that blue line up to the offense that it's been at over the last two series. If they can keep that, Anaheim's going to really have their hands full. Yeah, if, if the Nashville Predators defense can shut down that Getzlav or Raquel mm. line, Anaheim's going to have a hard, hard time scoring, I think. Yeah, and then if they do get through the defense, they got Pekka Rinne to deal exactly. with, who's been almost lights out. He's been the best goalie in these, these playoffs maybe even this past couple of years. Yeah, doesn't he have two numbers. shutouts in the playoffs so far? Because I know they did shut out uh, Chicago in game two in Chicago. I think they shut them I, twice. Yeah, so I think he's leading uh, the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken, in shutouts as well. I mean, Pekka Rene and his goals against average is below two as well. I mean, he's been lights out. Someone said that he has the best playoff numbers in the past, like, eight years or something like that. Maybe. From a goaltender. I don't know if that's true or not. Doesn't yeah, I'd have to check, but... Yeah. He's, you, he's playing amazing. That's yeah, you get consistent know. goaltending out of a guy like Pekka Rinne. You yeah. know, he's played on the international stage, playoffs, that sort of thing. So Nashville obviously feels very confident uh, with what they have in net. And I said in a previous video that Nashville were able to dissect and almost embarrass the Chicago Blackhawks because they did their homework on them. And they just, you know, had a system in place so that at the puck drop for game one, they knew strategically exactly how to annihilate the Chicago Blackhawks. Have they done the same homework with Anaheim? That's my big question. We'll see. All right, let's leave it at that because uh, this video is getting a little long, so we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Um, this is your first video on Post of Post. We hope you hit the subscribe button. We're always talking hockey here. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to follow us on social media, check the description down below for all those links. If you're into podcasts, there's links down there as well. So, uh, you know, subscribe to those. And, and we, we release every Sunday. We record sat Saturday mornings and release Sunday. So check out that. Thank you very much for watching. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Adios.